All right, we are going to create our own wild thing, very similar to what was in Maurice Syndax, where the wild things are. You're going to get a half sheet of paper that looks like this. Make sure to write your name and class code on it. And then you're going to look to the screen for a piece of paper that's gonna look like this. It says roll a monster, but we're gonna use them to make our wild things. Each person's gonna have their own dice and you're going to roll this to see what your wild thing's going to look like. When you draw your wild thing, make sure that you fill in your space. We want a nice big wild thing because we're going to be stamping on some textures and we are eventually going to cut out your wild thing. So we don't wanna have something very tiny that we have to try to cut out. Okay, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to draw my wild thing body. So I'm ready for that. I'm gonna roll my dice. I rolled a three. So I'm gonna use this as my wild things body. Let's see. I have a nice big space like that. And he has arms. And when I draw my fingers, those could be the pieces that are a little tricky to cut out. So I'm going to make them kind of big so I can cut them out. And then I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna make his feet extra large. My wild thing has some big stompers. And I'm gonna add in some toes, just like that. Oh, there's my toes. Okay, so there's my wild thing's body. Oh, I need to add in his hair. Perfect, there's my wild things here. Okay, let's see, I'm going to next do the eyes. So I'm gonna roll my dice, I rolled a five. So my wild things eyes are gonna look like this one. So I've got one small eye. Kind of look like he's got some highlights, maybe something like that. And I'm gonna make my other eye very big. I don't know, maybe some highlights like that. Sure, there's my wild thing's eyes. All right, let's do his mouth. Oh, I rolled a number one, so I'm gonna have a mouth that looks like this. Kind of a nice squiggle line. And then he's got a couple of teeth coming down. I'm gonna do him like that, nice big teeth. <laughs> I like him already. He's so fun. Okay, next thing I'm going to do is my ears. And I rolled a six. Oh, he's just got some simple ears right here. So I'm going to add in my ears. Like so. One big and one little. Okay, I have finished my roll -a monster But before you completely decide you're done with your monster, Take a critical look at your monster and decide, is there any other details that you want to add? For instance, my ears here, I might add in a little line right there to kind of show like the inside of his ears. Um, maybe if there's something where I go, oh, I wanna make his fingers maybe a different shape than rounded ones. Maybe I'm thinking that doesn't look very fun to color. Maybe I'll make rectangular fingers. Like that that might be a little easier for me to cut out so I'm gonna make that change before I start outlining something like that uh oh look what I've done I've created a space that does not look like it's gonna be fun to cut out let me fix that oh no and I've drawn too dark that's okay we'll cut out our wild thing maybe I'll slide him over just a little bit. There we go. That should be a little easier. Oh, I like that so much better. Excellent. All right. Once I have my wild thing drawn and I'm very happy with it, I'm going to get a Sharpie and I'm just going to go over my pencil lines. Notice why I said earlier, if you wanted to make a change, that was your time to do it. Because once we go over your wild thing 
with Sharpie, there's no going back on what we decide, okay? And it's okay if I'm not exactly over my pencil lines because remember we're going to eventually cut it out. So there's a chance I may cut off a pencil line that maybe I missed. Or if I didn't, I'm going to end up coloring over it. So maybe I can cover it that way. Or if I really want to before I start coloring, I can go back and erase them as well. That would work. And I think I've decided while I'm sitting here with my Sharpie, I'm going to color in my wild thing's eyes like that. But now that I've done that, I think I'm only going to color one of the eyes. I think I'm going to make the other eye a different color because that sounds like fun. So I'm going to leave the other one uncovered or excuse me, uncolored, not covered. like so oh missed these two there is my wild thing now i'm ready to color <laughs> Now that I've finished coloring, I'm going to take my Sharpie and I'm going to create what's called a half drop pattern. A half drop pattern is the type of line that you use when you want to draw scales. We are going to add scales somewhere onto your wild thing. You don't have to have a lot of scales, but we're going to at least have a little bit. I decided to practice on the edge of my paper since I knew I'd cut it out. I felt like the right spot for my wild thing to have scales was right up here at the top of his head. And like I said, I'm not going to put a lot, but I have to be able to show I know how to draw that type of line. So I'm drawing just two lines of scales at the top. Once I finish my scales, I'm going to use a piece of styrofoam and some black paint to add on hair or spikes, however you want to think about it. My styrofoam was too big, so I cut it in half instead. That way my spikes are not too big. I decided my wild thing needs some spikes on his stomach, so that's where I'm going to put them. I dip the end of my styrofoam in the black paint, and then I'm going to stamp it onto my wild thing. I decided to put my spikes on his stomach.
There they are. Sorry about that. I decided to add spikes onto the stomach and I'm having them just go any which direction. Doesn't have to be a lot. You could decide to add your spikes maybe at the top of his head. The big thing you don't want to do is put your spikes off of your wild thing's body because then when we cut it out, you're going to have to cut out around all those spikes. The next part is going to be my jar that my wild thing is going to be trapped in. On a larger sheet of paper, you're going to draw a long skinny oval at the top of your paper. This will be the top of the jar lid. We'll draw the sides of the jar lid with two lines coming down and then another curved line to connect them. For the jar itself, I'm going to curve out a little from the lid and go straight down toward the bottom of my paper and then curve back in just a little bit. Do the same thing on the other side, only in the opposite direction. Curve out a little and go straight down toward the bottom of your paper. Then you're going to connect those two lines at the bottom. There's my jar. I'm going to add on some highlight lines to show that my light is reflecting off my jar. And then I'm going to add some lines around the side of my lid to show like the grooves where you tighten the jar lid on. There we go. And there's my jar. Now I'm going to get my wild thing and cut him out. I'm very carefully going to cut around my wild thing. If you've got some fingers or some hair that are a little tricky to cut out, cut out around them and go back and cut out the space between the, the hair and the fingers. I'm going to add glue throughout my wild thing and glue him on so it looks like he's inside my jar. <laughs> 